The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. From Psalm 16, the psalmist and we with him. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. Amen. A beautiful reminder for us from the Word of God through the words of the psalmist that we have no good apart from God, but that he does not abandon our soul to the depth of Sheol. He gives us and offers to us life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And for David, who is the writer of Psalm 16, the knowledge that the Lord is always present and active in his life leaves him, as it does for us, with a profound sense of well-being and security. Specifically for him and for us, we can find security and encouragement in this convicting truth that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And as the Apostle Peter proclaimed at Pentecost, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. As people who have called God to himself, let's take a moment and lay those sins that we know that we have done and left undone at the feet of Jesus, readying ourselves for his gift of forgiveness. We confess together, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Lord, have mercy. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Christ, have mercy. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Lord, have mercy. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The good news for you right now is that Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, in his authority and by his command, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We worship and praise the Lord. You may. Amen. As you're able, please stand for today's gospel. 
Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and while growing in his awareness of truth, he does not yet fully comprehend God the Spirit's miraculous work of new birth through faith and baptism, even though those are the means of life God the Father offers to the world. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I have said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except him who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. You may be seated for our New Testament reading. The New Testament reading for today comes from Acts 2, verses 14 through 39. Preaching at Pentecost, Peter shows from the scriptures that the crucified Christ is Lord of God's people, named Israel, and that Jesus Christ is also the Savior of all nations. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the multitude. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, 
Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the, th the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh, flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this with you, yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. As you're able, please stand as we prepare to recite this morning's Nicene Creed. Today being Trinity Sunday, some congregations make the practice of reciting the Athanasian Creed. Uh, as long as I'm your pastor, uh, you can visit with me and talk about the Athanasian Creed, but we won't recite it in worship. We'd be here till about noon, and it's confusing. Uh, so we will recite today the Nicene Creed, uh, which teaches us again on this Holy Trinity Sunday beautifully who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's speak together again the truth of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of be begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Told you you're going to get some exercise in today with Trinity Sunday. Uh, it is a blessing to gather today to hear the Word of God. We are in the Gospel of John chapter 3. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you and praise you for dwelling here among us through your Word and sacraments. Bless us, Father, to hear your living word again today, to see its relevance, its import for our life, for the life of the world, for the life of those that we know and love. Bless us today, Lord, to hear your word, to abide in your word, and to bear fruit as a result of your spirit-filled word at work in us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The everyday headline in our world is arguably this. It's not supposed to be this way, but it is. Life is broken and bad news abounds. Bad news sells. But the reality is that humankind today is not how God intended us to be at the beginning of creation. We are living as recipients of the fall. And we know that when Adam and Eve gave in to temptation from the account in Genesis, we know that at that point sin entered our human condition. And as, as a result, life has been robbed of its wholeness, its completeness, and its perfection. And ultimately, Every single one of us is part of that equation. The Apostle Paul tells us that very plainly. He says, this is Romans 3.23, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every single one of us has missed the mark of perfection that God sets for us, namely in the Ten Commandments. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, myself included. And that's bad news. As a result of, of that sin affecting us and infecting us, even as followers of Jesus, we still may live with guilt or fear. Certainly we see this in our world. Fear and anxiety, envy, lust, resentment, anger, emptiness, aloneness, a sense of incompleteness. You know, sin pollutes us at the very core of who we are, and left to our own devices, Scripture tells us we are spiritually dead. And, and sin is not an intellectual problem. It's not something we can think our way out of. It's, it's a moral problem that affects us deeply. Some people may try to think themselves out of it. No, knowing that bad news abounds and the bad news of sin is real, some may attempt to fashion good news by their own reason or strength. And Nicodemus was arguably one of those who tried to go that route, at least at first. John tells us in his gospel, in verse 1 of chapter 3, that Nicodemus was a man of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews. And so like his peers, he would have been quite knowledgeable and probably also a gifted teacher. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, a leader in the Sanhedrin, which was a, a group of colleagues who, who would have comprised really the supreme council in Jerusalem uh, that acted as a judicial court. And that court uh, would have served as the political link to the Roman governor. And that court, the Sanhedrin, was personally responsible for neutralizing any troublesome teachers or threats to the public order. And so Nicodemus is a man undoubtedly of great stature, 
great authority, no doubt great knowledge. He approaches Jesus kind of on the down low, secretly. John says, by night, but that's what that means. And Nicodemus says to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Interesting how Nicodemus approaches Jesus there, kind of under the cover of darkness, secretly, doesn't want his colleagues to know that he's checking things out. He says, Rabbi, we know. Here he is standing in front of the incarnate word of God, touting his own knowledge. Isn't that ironic? Standing in front of the God who knows all things, and he says, Rabbi, we know. He's kind of taking on the mantle as a leader of the Sanhedrin, sort of speaking for the group, we. But also, he's bold, if not foolish. He doesn't ask a question. He sort of maybe has a question, but he's phrasing it in the form of a statement. And so, in this way, he's very pridefully kind of asserting his knowledge and asserting his place. But Jesus doesn't waste any time and comes right back and stumps him. Stops Nicodemus dead in his tracks. D Jesus answers him. This is verse 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again or born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And right there in short order, in a matter of six, eight seconds, Jesus has turned Nicodemus on his own head. Nicodemus says to Jesus, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? This isn't making sense to Nicodemus, right? He's, he's trying to fashion good news under his own paradigm, under his own manner of thinking in his own mind. Jesus just reasserts, Jesus answers, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. As he first approaches Jesus, Nicodemus, the learned teacher and leader that he is, he he seems to think or suggest that he knows most everything. But in reality, very quickly, by comparison, Jesus shows him essentially he knows nothing. At least nothing of the things that matter. That's in verse 10. Jesus tells him again, Are you the teacher of Israel and you yet do not even understand these things? He is trying to fashion the good news in a way that sounded good to him. But even if he were to fashion a full picture of good news from his own perspective, it would still be insufficient. In his mind at first, Jesus was an excellent teacher, and that's how he would have related to him being a teacher himself. But he only saw Jesus as a human teacher. In, in the mind of the Sanhedrin, Good teachers were the answer to the most pressing problems. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, even today, is it, is it good to have good teachers? Well, absolutely. And there are many, many good things in this very, very bad world that we live in. Teachers among them. But the problem for Nicodemus and for us is this. And this is an important problem. If we rely on good things to secure our place in the kingdom of God, that's bad. I'll say that again. If we rely on good things to secure our place in the kingdom of God, that's bad. Tradition may be good. Political economic development arguably is good. Education is good. Education, medication, vacation is good. Freedom is good. Freedom is good. This weekend, we remember and give thanks to God for the lives. The soldiers who fought made the greatest sacrifice and secured freedom by their blood this Memorial Day weekend. That's good. Wealth, good. Health, good. All good. But here is the thing, even this so-called good news becomes bad if we rely on it for deliverance. Before I was a follower of Jesus, I recall 
a, an image in my mind. I was in high school, and I was sitting in my living room, knee to knee with a close friend of mine. He and I were student body leaders at our large high school, and I did not know the Lord at the time. I'm not sure if he did either. And he asked me, as if I were to know the answer, which I didn't, how do you get to heaven? And I told him what I honestly thought was true. Well, I think by kind of, you know, being a good person, being nice to people, you know, all the, all the things that fall under that, you know, taking care of your neighbor, living by the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and on and on and on I went. And I was convicted that that was true. Sort of like Nicodemus was convicted that what he thought was true. But it's not true. There is no human remedy for the plight of sin. Because even if you could, and you can't, but even if you could, even if we could enter into heaven by means of the good things that we do, how good do they have to be? How many good things do we have to do? There's no end to it. And there is no human remedy for the plight of sin, no matter what we try to do by our own reason or strength. We can't overcome that gap. When it comes to our brokenness, we try to, we can try all we want to mask it, medicate it, manage it, put makeup on it, make fun of it, whatever. But none of that ultimately works. Nothing that we hold to, no paradigm that we can come up with will ever achieve for us forgiveness and eternal life and salvation. No matter, here is, here is an important point, if not a convicting one, no matter how good something may seem or be on its own, it will not save us eternally. And if we think that a good thing will or doing good things will, that's bad. The only way, this is the truth that God makes clear to Nicodemus, the only way for us to inherit eternal life and see the kingdom of God is, as Jesus says, to be born all over again. From above, from God, by his initiative in his way. And the good news is that we have the good news. We also have microphones with fresh batteries. <laughs> Hopefully this one works. Rob. It's not Rob's fault, it's the battery's fault. Rob's videoing us. I'll try this. The only way, as I was saying, for us to inherit eternal life and see the kingdom of God is, as Jesus says, to be born all over again from above, from God, by his initiative in his way. And we have the truly good news, not the good news that we've made up, not the paradigm that Nicodemus thinks he has. God gives us the good news. And on this Trinity Sunday, we see it come to us in the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. The scriptures tell us of the Father that he is love. God is love, and that he delights, the scripture says, this is in Micah and Luke 15, God delights to show mercy. Think about that, my friends. God the Father delights in withholding from us the wrath that we deserve. He he delights in withholding that from us so much that he so loved the world, Jesus says, that he sent his one and only Son in order that through his Son the world might be saved. He has not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. He delights in showing us that mercy. And the Son himself, the Scriptures testify that in obedience to the Father who sent him, he was, as Jesus says in John 3, lifted up on the cross for us in our place. He suffered He crucified. He was crucified. He died and was buried. Jesus is for you, for me, for us, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He takes our place. 
and dies the death that we deserve. And that is very, very good news. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who was sent to us by the Father and the Son through water and the Word of God, that Holy Spirit brings us to saving faith. We cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe on our Lord Jesus Christ or remain in the body of Christ. It's the Holy Spirit's work. He grants us new birth as the children of God. Remember, as I said, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. He has secured for you a place in his kingdom. And the Spirit of God continues to work in us, continues to work in us and reassure us of the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. If you yourself or someone that you know and love is a follower, baptized follower of Jesus and struggling in sin in some way, know this, Jesus Christ wants life for you. He loves you. He's calling you again to repentance and faith. He is calling you to lean into your identity as a forgiven and baptized child of God because that's who you are. You are not the sins that you do. You are a child of God in Christ Jesus, and he's calling you back to himself. Nicodemus could not fashion any of this about God. He could not understand it. He tried to make his own paradigm of the good news. As knowledgeable as he was, it simply didn't work. But the good news that we have of Christ's death and resurrection for us, it's not, it's not just generic esoteric, academic good news. It's very, very good news for you and for me and for others that we know and love. And an encouraging word for us, if ever we ourselves doubt about whether or not we're included in the kingdom of God, this is an encouraging word here. And also it's encouraging for those that we're praying for who may not yet be believers or who may have strayed from the church. Jesus himself says, whoever believes in him, whoever will not perish but have eternal life. Don't write people off. Don't give up on praying for that son or daughter or grandchild or friend or neighbor or colleague. They are not beyond hope. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All of us who are baptized with the word of God and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have new spirit-filled life and that same gift is available to people who have not yet received it. We've been washed by the blood of Christ. Our sins have been forgiven. Repeat this after me if you would. I am a forgiven child of God. You are. You and I have a place in God's kingdom. We belong to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is very, very good news. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all our understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As you're able, please stand for our offering as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer.
Amen. The Lord be with you. As we pray today, again, a reminder for those who may have come in after my announcement, we rejoice and celebrate with Zach and Rachel Lake as they welcomed a daughter Natalie into the world uh, this morning at 12.41 a.m. Uh, baby and mom and dad are, are doing well. And also, uh, as some of you have asked, uh, we continue to pray with and for the hurts as well, for uh, Zach and Anna and baby Linus, who remain on the west side at Children's Hospital yet. Uh, he was due to have a surgery to help with his uh, airway this past week that was not needed ultimately. Uh, Tuesday is going to be an important discussion of next steps, but we continue to pray with and for them as Linus is resting uh, with some help and mom and dad are resting as well. Let's pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For our continual growth in understanding of the depths of God's riches, wisdom, and knowledge through his word, so that we glorify him forever, let us pray to the Lord. For a faith that believes Jesus Christ was delivered up according to the definite plan uh, of God to be our Savior, and that our hearts are glad as we serve, for this let us pray to the Lord. For all who make, administer, and enforce our laws, and their families, that the Lord, who is enthroned as King forever, blesses all these servant leaders with courage, wisdom, and protection, and understanding, so that truth and justice prevails, and lawlessness is kept at bay. For this and all these, let us pray to the Lord. For a long memory on this Memorial Day weekend, and all days, to cherish those who sacrificed all, in devotion to our country's peace and security, serving faithfully unto death to protect our freedom and defend our land, let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer in body or mind and those who care for them, for those who weep and those who rejoice, that the Lord of hosts would uphold them in the truth that since he is at their right hand, they cannot be shaken. We pray today for Debbie and James and Wes and Shelby and Bo, Ashlyn and Hudson, Donna, the Deedees, Ken and Eleanor, Carl and Linda, Corky. We pray with and for the Heatland family as the matriarch. Shirley was laid to rest this past week. Bless Patricia and Shiloh and the whole extended Heatland family with your grace, your comfort, and your mercy. We continue to entrust into your loving care the hurts and baby Linus for all his health needs and for rest for them all. We pray with and for Glenn and Rita and Carol and Ruth Ann and Pastor Daniel Mers. The Reeds, as we prepare for Dorothy Reed's memorial service this coming Saturday, Bless them with continued comfort and hope in the resurrection. We pray for Joseph and Lori, Wendy, John, Mike and Joan, Jim and Janet, Alan, Zach. We pray with and for Pastor Tim and Tennille Winterstein of our sister church in East Wenatchee as Pastor Tim and his family prayerfully deliberate an invitation to serve at University Lutheran Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Bless them with the needed discernment to know, dear God, where it is you're leading them to serve, be it to continue to serve here or to serve there. Give them clarity, peace, and encouragement regarding your will. We pray for all of our families, husbands, wives, and children, including and especially today the Lake family, Zach and Rachel and baby Natalie. Bless them in their new and burgeoning life together. We again thank you for members of our armed forces and their families, and again all who gave their lives. Our first responders and their families, and anyone, dear God, who's experiencing pain or suffering. We bring to your feet again today Maxine and Janet, Gloria, Pastor Art Siegfried, and Martha. There are many more people, dear God, in our hearts and minds who need what you have to offer. 
We pray that our God uplifts the hearts of these and all people in the one true faith. For this and these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. We rejoice in his resurrection and draw strength from his ascension before you where he reigns for us as our own high priest. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.